So if you're a two channel guy and if you want to just give a recommendation to the viewers out here who are planning to probably build their own two channel stereo setup, maybe not as great as a, a BMW 700 or an 800 series speakers, but even if they want to start with a bookshelves or an active pair of speakers, what would be your advice? Like where do you see or how can start small? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> take a pair of bookshelves and a small amp, which is a, like a streaming amp. Okay. Not very expensive. But not multiple amps, like mm, an amplifier, a DAC, or not multiple amps. Just one, just one amp, so mm -hmm. that you can get your ears tuned. Uh, because people who have not started with two channels, I always advise them start slow. Yeah. Enjoy the journey. Two channel is a journey. Yeah. It's. It it's... is never. You are never going to get it exact. <laughs> okay. Room plays a big 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 part in two channel how you place your speakers learn how to place your speakers you know it's you'll never get it right the first time. i can guarantee you I, I made mistakes yeah, yeah and i made tons of mistakes it took me seven years in my house to actually get the speakers get right you know so it's it's not about that i would rather you spend money on on the content mm -hmm. than getting an expensive speakers and not having the content up there right and how about the cables and the oh yeah, so for, for cables, everyone says, hey, speaker cables looks nice, this, that, lot of snake oil. What right. I would suggest is take out the stock cable, put a nice power cable first. Do right. your changes every six months. Because if you change three things, you don't know what is changing yourself. Correct. Right? So you, you change your power cable first, then change the uh, power cables on the source first, then the amplifier, and then you can go interconnect. And then last thing that you change is your speaker. And for those of the people who have got bookshelf speakers, do you advise having a separate subwoofer in a two-channel stereo setup? Not or you really, don't? Not really, not really. Because again, phase alignment, if you have exactly Dirac, both the speakers. Yeah, you if you have Dirac, you can do that. Uh, or you know, it's going to be very difficult for you to place the sub. You know, it's always going to sound off. Yeah. And again, if you have to choose between floor standards and a bookshelf, I would rather you have a bookshelf. Hmm? Because it's easier, you do not excite the room. Yeah. The trick is not to excite the room to get the imaging correct. Okay. And uh, isosceles or equilateral, which triangle honestly works better for speaker placement and for the I have a listener. I have a different take on it. Okay. So I have my speakers wider and I sit within the cone. So you okay. So you know it's it's like sitting as a conductor would sit. Mm. So your imaging is wider mm. or the separation is wider. Instead of getting it at only one point, you are trying to create getting, a you know, bigger it's not, arc. It's, it's not, it's like if you're watching a concert and you have different multiple elements multiple at multiple places. Place. So, you know, when you, when you go inside, mm. okay, it goes. And in fact, uh, if your room does not support or you cannot afford a, uh, acoustics, you would rather go for a midfield or a near field experience than to go than for to far, go. far field. So I think this is good information for uh, uh, two channel stereo guys and uh, which products in the NADs would be the best products for people to buy for two channel stereos. I know you love the M3, the M33s. Yes, uh, I love the M33s. We've just won the ESA award for the M66. But right those, those, like those are out of the I, budget. I know if, if uh, that is yeah, out of the budget, then which is the... Uh, they're really expensive. Uh, not that, that, that expensive for the top two channel guys, but right. yeah. Uh, but I would, I would, I would ask you to start at a, uh, uh, close to a C700 uh, version two, which has got a phono preamp, which we are going to launch. And it's how got, much is that price? It's got direct. It should be around a lakh sixty. Okay. It does eighty watts. It's got a screen so that you can watch. But that comes with a built-in Dirac. Uh, it has got a built-in Dirac. You just have to buy. The you know, we are the cheapest uh, as far as uh, Dirac is concerned. We are at ninety nine dollars. Okay, well, and why is that so? Like, oh, because we were the first guys to do Dirac, and then everyone followed. Okay, so we still have it at ninety nine, uh, and you buy the our first license. mover advantage. Uh, yeah, so we for our for our AV receivers, you buy it only once, mm. and you can do as many. We are not stuck with the serial number. Okay, you know, so if you have two AV receivers, you buy the license once. Okay, so let's talk about Dirac more now. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you, like, like you know, what difference do you see happening? When a, when a client or when a user does a direct calibration in his home versus the ODCs and the YPOWs and the MCACs as well as anthem room correction, let's talk, I mean, you know, we can include that also. See, the thing is, uh, ODCs and all never really took the room into consideration or 
they never really did the phase interference between the tweeter and the mid range and the woofer within the speakers hmm. okay for me it was very easy to understand dirac is because i used to synthesis synthesis yeah correct right? it's it's just an extension of that do you want to share the history of dirac to everyone uh, it's not a history but, but like where the, how did that start like you know the journey so, uh, who was the one so, who started so it first like synthesis this was started by dr floyd tool who hmm. was working then with him Mm-hmm. he was one of the directors and uh, we did we did this calibration with eight mics uh, and the asdec the asdec and uh, doing all the sweep of course we had analogs then mm-hmm. uh, cables running in and then we came to blue uh, which was the cat 6 cables and everything right. fantastic system and today if you even if you see harman harman has gone back to dirac yes because it's one mic it's easy uh, they have the target curve but most of the people will tell you oh you stop at the target curve target curve is actually where you start from actually because that because that's when you start finding the target them. curve is the same for nad is the same for storm it is the same for denon marans pioneer now changing that target curve mm. will depend upon how much experience you have you can play with it but please be careful because you know once it starts reading your room if you have a dip you will never know you know only experience can tell you whether it's a speaker or the room yes. whether you are in in a place where you know certain frequencies there's a suck out yeah. and if you try and push those things up uh, you're probably going to blow your speakers so uh, i mean obviously the target curves that uh, dirac can offer are far more precise yeah. uh, than what the other brands uh, yeah, can yeah, yeah. but for a, a normal home cinema user who is like you know cuz in india we have people who have migrated from the basics of the sony's and the samsung's that we all see right okay the so biggest for them yeah, for even big, a direct oh, sorry even a odyssey works fine yeah so or biggest biggest complaint that i have uh, what i hear from clients is a hey, harsh yaar there is no base yeah you know once the direct is done there is no base correct so what i tell them is set your subwoofer to half at 12 o'clock hmm. do the direct curve don't touch anything just increase the sub after that The problem is most of the guys actually take this up to eighty percent. They the take volume. it first and then they and do then, the direct. and into the direct. So you don't have headroom. Yeah, right. We are Indians. Our kids are born at sixty dB in the hospital. So <laughs> all all our functions we have we have Ganpati going on now. We will yeah. have Navratri now. Yeah. We are already hearing everything at hundred hundred and ten dB. Absolutely, absolutely, it's crazy. Yeah. So that is the thing. So set it to twelve o'clock. Run your direct. Increase your sub. How much ever you want. Okay. but then coming back to the same question like to the people who have just started their journey with a, a basic decent 5.1.2 atmos do you think for them the dirac versus odyssey really matters like no it won't it won't exactly just, right just do your basic uh, placement right placements right the do crossover your distance, crossover everything uh, you have small speakers just increase the crossover right to 150 so that you don't overdrive your speakers right so these are some basic tips which yeah. they can do and even with an odyssey kind of setup they can still get they can still experience. enjoy it right it's only when you compare to two hmm. you'll come to know the difference that's where you know the i think the th- that's a human uh, tendency yeah. wherein we always try to see that okay if not this what what is the other option and then when we explore that option we always like the second yeah. one prop it's 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 like you know you can have dal chawal at home hmm. And when you go to a restaurant and then you have dal tadka and chawal it's the same damn thing yeah but it's just the different taste mm. you know it's just that little bit more okay so i think uh, that brings us to a good section of direct versus odyssey or not just odyssey i would have all the other brands yeah. uh, just one last point sorry again uh, anthem room correction we haven't spoken about oh it's a very, very how close is that to oh no 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 it's not at all close it's not at all close no, but no, it is no. still It's nice. Huh, exactly. It, I'm not saying it's bad. Huh. It is nice. Hmm. But can you change the curve? You're stuck with the same curve that ARC does for you. Right. Correct. While in Dirac, you can actually move your points. I want to raise only say 40 kilohertz. I cannot do that in yours. Hmm. Which you can do it in. Which you can do in Dirac. Okay. So Dirac is more versatile, hmm. uh, and it's easy. 